So, uh, yeah, so um, tonight I'm just going to be talking a little bit about this uh, small project that I did. There'll be a demo inside uh, this presentation, but basically the question that I wanted to answer was what jobs are in demand? Uh, I hit one year at my job, then I had a lot of angst. So yes, yeah. so instead of like normal people, I asked, like instead of asking like other people and my friends and maybe I don't have enough friends or recruiters, like I wanted to answer the question like, you know, what should I be doing? So this is like a kind of an old job ad from a long time ago, right? Um, and what I did is basically I extracted some keywords from um, the job ads on the internet. Like these are the keywords that you will be looking at um, in this ad basically. Um, and then I use that to do data science. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so the original goal for why I built this was to code more because at the time my project, uh, my, <clears throat> excuse me, my job was very, very project management heavy. Uh, I wanted to learn new tools, which wasn't exactly successful because I got very lazy. And then I wanted to quantify my options, which I think you know what I'm talking about. Lah. Yeah, so uh, I will just skip to the conclusion because I think some people may be very disappointed that I'm not going to present like really heavy stats here. I'm just going to show you the demo later. But what I learned from doing this over the past few months was uh, personal projects. Uh, people really love it when you put it on your resume and uh, they basically go, okay, this person can do the job. Um, however, you need different kinds of projects for different ty types of jobs. Yeah, so this was just my personal experience over the past few months. <laughs> and then um, one of the other things that I noticed was maybe I'm in the wrong field because there are about 10 times as many general software jobs as data analyst and scientist jobs put together. Um, and if you're looking about salary compensation numbers, the accuracy of numbers posted online depends on the company. I've had people tell me, oh no, that must be a typo. Yeah, but sometimes it's a very, very good negotiating tool in terms of trying to push the number upwards. You go, yeah, you know, this is the range that I think I should be looking at rather than telling you what their number is, especially after our manpower minister has said, you don't need to tell them what your number is. Yep. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. So like, if you want to learn anything from like what I'm going to say the next like 10 minutes, probably not relevant. You can stop here. <laughs> Go and have a beer or something. Yeah, okay. So like what I did uh, in the, how, how I did this uh, thing that I'm going to show you, actually I should show you it first, but I will talk about it first then like you can look at it and judge me. Yeah, okay. So like what, I, what tools I used to scrape job descriptions of the internet was uh, Selenium and Beautiful Soup Spacey to basically pass the text. Uh, Raspberry Pi, which I hosted on because I got very lazy and I wanted to control my costs and I already had one. Um, and then I used a free copy of Tableau. Thank you GovTech for <laughs> sponsoring this because there was an internal uh, hackathon uh, that I participated in the Data Arcade Challenge. Yep. So this turned into that project. And then uh, because it's also free, Google Cloud Storage to put all the data in. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so this is the rough workflow. Lah. Basically, uh, what I do is, I'm not going to tell you which sites I'm using because uh, Michael mentioned something about legality and I'm like, mm, yeah, a bit sensitive. So, but anyway, like the, I, the general idea is this, once you've identified a site that you have, that has information you want, you go and get links, you visit the sites, uh, you pass the raw data on the site into a structured format. Sometimes this is a problem, I'll tell you why later. And then after you pass it, you store the raw data in the cloud, in Google Cloud or whatever uh, place you want because Raspberry Pis are prone to breaking down. Um, and then uh, periodically do batch cleaning and analysis of the data, which is, yeah, to, to make sense of it. So the techniques that I used are mostly very, very simple natural language processing in Spacey and a few other Python frameworks. Um, so basically part of speech tagging to find proper nouns such as React.js and Python. Uh, term frequency to identify the top five or so skills interesting to me personally. Uh, data cleaning at a character level because people put in emojis like fire and hearts into their job descriptions as well as uh, different languages, which is quite surprising to me. And then dimension reduction. Okay, so the issues I faced uh, doing this project were basically quite a number of things relating to web scraping, um, the data cleaning and the data pipelines, uh, basically. Okay, so uh, one of these things are the changes to site structure, inconsistent site structure. So when you try to scrape a website, let's say they change the website a little bit, your script will break because <laughs> you're looking for a particular thing in the the. the the website that you cannot find anymore or uh, every day uh, certain websites change certain parts of their 
their website and it's like just yeah no um, then the other thing is uh, cross-site duplicates which is basically when you're scraping multiple sites and you have the same job description posted on different sites on different dates is it the same one or is it different ones you don't really know yeah, and then the longer term, these were more of my own deficiencies. Um, I wanted to make the ETL more scalable and robust, but actually it's just a cron job and, and, and a class <laughs> because I got very lazy and I found something already hinted. Yeah, okay. So anyway, like these are the things that I'm working on. Error handling. Sometimes the page doesn't load and then you get errors. Um, so you ingest basically nothing, but it's marked as done. Um, so I need to fix that. And then storage as well. I need to put things into a proper database. Now everything is just sitting in its flat files. Yeah. Okay, so basically this is something I uploaded uh, onto Taboo Public. The link is there. If you want to see it, you can see it. Um, I've had some success, uh, basically, how to say? I've had some success, basically, I won't say it. <laughs> I've had some success uh, when people ask me, can you do the job? And I, I tell them and I show them this and they're like, yes, okay, you can. <laughs> yeah, and then the other things that I did, um, one of the things that I realized was that there are actually not that many data scientist jobs. Uh, yeah, I'm in the wrong field. Uh. Yeah, okay. So maybe I'll stop sharing uh, the, I'll stop sharing the, uh, what's it called? I'll stop sharing the uh, presentation and show you guys the Tableau demo, but I'll also open it up to the floor for questions if anybody has any questions. Yeah. Mike, Michael, is it okay to do that? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. No okay, worries. so anybody wants to ask me questions can just ask. Yeah, okay, so basically this was submitted uh, to the Data Arcade Challenge uh, <clears throat> that GovTech organized, uh, I think like a few months ago. So I had a few months to work on it. So basically like I scraped the 90,000 jobs between June to September, 2020. And then this is basically taking the text of all of these jobs and squashing them uh, into two dimensions what you see are actually two clusters. So one is um, general job descriptions, which don't really have very a lot of hard skills, such as account system um, and software type jobs, which might overlap. So you see things like system storage engineer, where you need AWS and Azure. And you see DevOps engineer, where you need JavaScript engineering development. There's some overlap because DevOps may not need JavaScript sometimes. Yeah, OK. So then um, this one is really a bit sensitive, but uh, yeah, basically uh, over the past like month, two months, three months, you can actually look at how many people um, you are competing against and how many types of jobs that like, you know, have certain keywords that you're looking at um, here. Yep. So this is, yeah. So these are the two things that I wanted to highlight. Then obviously I had some address data. I threw it into, <laughs> I threw it into a dashboard. Yeah, so actually most of the jobs are recruiters. That's why you see there's a huge um, there's a huge concentration in the central area. Yep. And then the last one was something that was requested by my friend, uh, sorry, my colleague, yep, who I was working with for this thing. Yep, okay, so I guess, does anybody have any questions like about this? I can probably answer. Um, uh, this is a great project, Asharam. I mean, a lot of um, you know, you know, like informations are there. So, may I ask, like, what are the data sources? Like, which places uh, have you used for uh, like crawling the data? I'm already good. I'm already said that I'm not going to mention that. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, maybe I missed that part. No, no, it's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, like I, you can. I mean, you can think about it logically. Like, if you were to start doing this project by yourself, what would you do? Yeah, yeah. But as, I mean, some of the source, I, a lot of these things are public. Like, it's all uh, accessible on the internet. Um, it's just that, like, as Michael pointed out, some of the, some of the, uh, yeah, that it's it's a bit of a gray area like, to collect this data. So yeah. Okay. So I mean, for me. Um... I'm a software developer, but definitely data science. And then um, this area, data analytics is one of my area. Uh, so do you have any suggestion for me? How can I start, I mean, or how can I explore this area from uh, having the background of a software development? Um, okay, so 
I would say that you are very lucky to have a software development background. Um, and the number one thing that I would say that you should try to pick up is, uh, first of all, Python, and then get involved in the Python community if you aren't already. Um, and if you need to find a few communities that can help you with uh, getting your feet wet in terms of like doing data analytics, um, I would highly recommend Fast AI as a place to start looking at resources. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them anyway. I just uh, Google <laughs> solutions a lot and I end up at Fast AI quite often. Um, but people generally are very helpful. They're one of the they're one of the communities that are very inclusive. And then um, within Singapore itself, like we have AI Singapore, uh, which has a few platforms that you can uh, look at. I think they have a Discord channel. They have a couple other channels that you can look at. Yeah. So basically, like uh, Python, and surround yourself with people who are also interested in the same sorts of things. Yeah. If you want to get started. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sasha. No problem. Yeah. Hi, Sharon. Yes. Um, Sorry, who's this? I uh, YC. This is YC. Yeah. Oh, hi. Yes. Hi. Uh, actually, just wondering, uh, like, uh, for the job postings, right? Like, do you manage to obtain like the break breakdown between which are uh, direct hires and which are uh, postings by recruiters and so on? It depends on the source, but yes. <laughs> yes. It's possible to obtain that information. It, it really depends on where you get it from. Yeah. Oh, I see. So that, that kind of breakdown is tied to the job site that you are scraping from. Like. Is yes. that what you're saying? I see. That's right. Yeah. It, it really it really depends. Um, most of the time, uh, job descriptions tend to be reused if uh, the source is the same. So you can actually do a lot of analysis to understand if like, you know, it's a repost. Uh. Yeah. Well, actually, you don't have to do a lot of analysis. You just have to calculate cosine similarity. <laughs> yeah. Ah, nice. OK, thank you. No problem, yeah. Um, help me understand this graph a bit. So uh, this chart right now, I mean, what's on yes. the vertical and horizontal axis? Oh, actually, this one is very confusing. And we only put it in because uh, GovTech insisted that we follow this format. Sorry, Mike. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, OK. So so this is uh, actually something that I never wanted to put inside. But because we had to include five things, and I only had three. so. And this became inside. Um, the, the two axes don't really mean anything. They are basically X and Y axes. Um, okay, so imagine all the words that are in uh, job description, that are in job descriptions on the internet, like over the past three months, right? Um, how would you actually try and look at, like, how would you actually try and model like them as points in space? Um, basically, this 2D representation is what happens when you take the words and you form them into like numbers and then you flatten them into a 2D space. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's 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 uh, that's basically what this graph is meant to represent. The two, the more the closer the two points are, the more similar the words that are used in. Uh, the the two the the closer sorry, the more similar the two job descriptions are yeah yeah so sometimes this is a problem like because I know for instance like when Singtel posts a job they will have this really long paragraph about Singtel as a company then a really short paragraph about like the company the the job itself so some of this is like inter com intra company similarity as well yeah yeah. But yes, it's it's what it's uh, distance between the two points. Yep. So actually, Ooh. one of the things that like popped out that wasn't very well explained in this dashboard, right, is really that like it seems like within the two clusters, like the gold colorful cluster and the not so colorful cluster. Sorry, I'm in assistance of this world. Um, is that <clears throat> like you tend to get DevOps on one side, clusters of jobs on one side. Um, and then like the BAs of the world and data analysts of the world are kind of here. So within the two big clusters, you get like subclusters where skills are skills may be similar as well. But it's not one to one. Lah. Like for instance, like there are some really weird jobs out there. Like for instance, this software developer needs to do DevOps. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, like 
Whereas like, um, yeah, then you have embedded guys who need to do JavaScript. Yeah, this was something that we were sort of expecting, uh, basically for software jobs to have keywords that were similar because of the way that the data was pre-processed. Yeah, sorry, it's not a very good answer. No worries. Like, I, I think it's probably easier to say like math, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Assign a number to a word and then kind of splat them on the screen and see what happens, okay. Basically, yeah. So like imagine <laughs> if your whole job description is turned into like a three dimensional cube of words, uh, then you squish the cube into like a point and then like, yeah, <laughs> math. <laughs> 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 so for the uh, is it, uh, one thing I was uh, I'm interested to know is do you could you also do something like oh uh, I'd like to know how far the, the workplace is from my house yeah. no no you you, you have la, like so for instance this one like this person personally this is of interest to me okay like so Apple is somewhere here I think I can't remember where they are. Oh no. <laughs> Mokyo area. Like yeah, yeah, but you but you know roughly where your house is, right? So by right, what you can do is like you can you can shortlist based on uh distance to your house. Uh but we I didn't put it into the dashboard because a bit contentious and also very hard to calculate. It can be done. Um basically at the data level we have I'll show the data source. Actually, I shouldn't show the data source. <laughs> but yeah, at the data level we have uh addresses la. Yeah. And then you just need to uh, pass stuff. <laughs> well, you did mention that the some of the listing were actually from recruiters rather than yeah. the company so, themselves. So the recruiters uh, generally either I will filter them out or I will use the recruiter's address. Yeah, like it's not it's it, there's a lot of the it's not one to one. So like you see, there's a lot of postings here, but um, this one there are far fewer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm curious, do you see more jobs that allow remote work? Um, not in Singapore. Mm, okay. And you would, you would usually not be able to tease this out from a job description as far as I know. So for instance, a lot of job descriptions will just be like, uh, these are the skills we want, and uh, this is the profile that we're looking for. Then you have to go and talk to the potential prospective employers to ask them, so what is your policy of remote work like? Uh, yeah, it could be that I'm not scraping international sites. Uh, well, sites geared to international jobs. Lah. Yeah. Like all these jobs specifically are targeted for Singapore because I'm looking in Singapore. <laughs> how do you figure out how many people apply to the jobs? I think most job sites don't actually list this number or do they? Uh, okay, so there are at least two, which I'm scraping, which do list this number. Uh, but yes, most don't. And one of the limitations of this project is that you don't actually know who your competitors are because uh, most of the job sites will only will not either will either not show that, or uh, it's unreliable. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have something about how much the job is gonna pay? Uh, what do you mean? Sorry. I think you mentioned As in salary accuracy, numbers? Accuracy, accuracy of dollars is related to the company, but do you have something to visualize the, um, the, the pay scales and things like that? I mean, so that basically, yeah. So I will share the, uh, what's it called? I will share the, this thing again. Uh, like I have some stuff that I did that I didn't show <laughs> a bit sensitive. Um, yeah, anyway, like this is the graph for data scientist jobs for, I think what, like the past, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's actually a subset of the period. Like, I think it's like only one month, but basically you can see like which companies are hiring um, and that they're not that, not actually that many jobs. There's only about like, I think a like hundred plus, but yes, like I have the data. <laughs> How do we yeah. read this? So your X axis is also salary and your Y axis is salary as well? Okay, so basically most job sites, when they give you a salary number, it will not be a number, but a range. So uh, what I did was I uh, used the range. This is not meant to be like, uh, this, this, this is basically just meant to show that like I have data that I cannot really put out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so anyway, like um, in this 
uh, taboo dashboard, the public one, there are only certain tabs that are available to you. <laughs> yeah, the data which I have, uh, there's a lot more. Lah. Yeah. Yeah, like if you want to ask me any questions about the data, I'm happy to answer if I can, if I can answer it. Yeah. Hey, uh, Does being a data scientist pay well? Sorry, what? Does being a data scientist pay well? No. <laughs> That's surprising. It, I would say that if you had to choose between being a data scientist and being a software developer, you should probably play in a bigger market. Yeah. But 20K is quite a lot, actually. <laughs> software developers have that access too, actually. Really? Yes, they do. <laughs> they do. They do. OK. Yeah, and sometimes the numbers are a bit off. Uh, so from what I understand, there are two reasons why this can be off. First of all, uh, the sites that I'm scraping, somebody made a typo. It's quite often that like they made a typo and they're off by like tens of thousands of dollars. It's possible. Yeah, so you have to go and look at like, you have to cross-reference across uh, a few sources to see if it's correct. And then the second thing is that um, besides typos, uh, sometimes I think companies may repost <laughs> and the number becomes a bit funny. Yeah, this is just uh, what I observed from um, looking at, how to say, looking at the data that I have. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There's, there's actually one company who put like 100K. I mean, I saw Nicholas's uh, thing, like uh, basically like the range was like $10 to 100K or something. There are some jobs that are like that. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing is that uh, when people put in these things, they are also humans. So uh, sometimes there are mistakes. Most of the time, uh, the data is fairly okay. Uh, but there's a lot of like edge cases you have to catch. Lah. So like you have to, you can't just look at the number and go like, okay, this is the range. Like uh, this is just like a guide for what companies, to negotiate with companies lah, basically. <laughs> There's been cases where I've completely gotten the range wrong before. That's because the company put up too high a number and they got called out on it. <laughs> yeah. So, Michael, maybe this question maybe uh, would be uh, for, I mean, to you. Uh, let's say, I mean, what kind of qualifications is required or what kind of qualifications the employers required who offer, like, uh, five digit salary for the software developer because for from my personal um, experience what I see uh, what I have seen that I have friends who get um, you know 5k another friend who gets double of it another friend or other people who gets quite a lot of them so so what kind of skill set actually you know uh, draw the five digit salaries and stuff what do you what, what is going to be your response for that what do you say uh, <laughs> that's a trick question, isn't it? That's <laughs> <laughs> just really curious. <laughs> um, I think as a if uh, um as a, as a, as it goes, if you are paid more, you are given more responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So it come with more responsibilities. You also need to do a bit more. You need to have the ability to take on those responsibilities. Yeah. So those would be things like mentoring, guiding people, making hard technical decisions, uh, architecture decisions, uh, being able to execute on those decisions. Those will be the skills uh, set you will need to kind of like be a elite level or senior to lead level kind of a person. Uh. So if you're at that level, you probably can command that kind of salary scale so that's my thinking around this does anyone else have a differing opinion seriously mm -hmm. so and that also comes with the year of, year of experience that you uh, have right it's not that okay you just have like two years of experience and then you are getting like 10k in, like in general it's about the years but then again sometimes in some companies that you work in, you don't have much opportunities to really learn a lot of things yeah, or yeah. don't have an opportunity to really stretch your knowledge. So instead of being, having like 10 years of experience, you have 10 times one year of experience. So which means even though you have, you have said 10 years worth of 
work experience at this job, but your actual amount of like technical expertise and knowledge is maybe borderline one year plus because you haven't really grown or stretched yourself beyond a certain level. So uh, I wouldn't say a 10 year person here and a 10 year person there is equivalent. You probably yeah. want to also evaluate both at the same time. As in, I guess you go for, if I go for an interview, I would still have to go through the whole process that uh, any, a, a fresh grad will have to go through uh, things like the uh, coding interview, coding interview, uh, 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 take home take home tests, uh, coding challenges. These are stuff that I also have to do when I was uh, interviewing as well. So that's kind of like uh, even for me as I'm interviewing someone, uh, even though they say, "Oh, I'm I'm of this level," I just want to verify, and I want to do a simple test just to figure out whether the person really says what he can really do what he says he can do. Uh, beyond that, it will be like, okay, uh, in things you can't tell from a coding challenge will be like, uh, why do you make certain decisions, right? Your knowledge of, of a technical uh, framework, say your knowledge in the framework, you say you have many years of experience with a framework, and I'll ask you questions like, so why, why, is, why is it better using this way versus that way, right? If you, and then if you can't give me a good answer about why certain technical decisions are better in a framework rather than another, uh, rather than, you know, another, like approach A, approach B in framework, like Rails, for example, what different approaches, which is better or what are the trade-offs, right? right. So, so if you can't, can't give me the kind of, kind of uh, answers, uh, even though you have like 10 years of experience doing Rails and it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> mm, yeah, that, okay. Yeah, that's that definitely make perfect sense. Thanks, thanks, and thanks about yeah. Yeah, so I think it's about uh, operational knowledge, how to get things done. Then you go to one level deeper into like why do you want to do so? Why do we make certain decisions, right? Mm -hmm. So once you have that, it's easier to uh, build that. Once you have that depth, it's easier to get be able to command more salary. I guess you know. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Thanks yeah. for the response. Sorry, I didn't mean to hijack Sharon's talk. <laughs> no, I think that's actually a very good uh, summary of it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else have questions for Sharon? Yeah, I, I have one like uh, sub question. More like a uh, whole. If you say that like there's a quite a uh, lack in number of uh, data science job, then do you do you regret it or, or like? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I should have just done a boot camp and learned JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> regret, regret, regret. Actually, okay. the the easiest, uh, the biggest pool of jobs in Singapore, uh, where you actually do. Uh, I guess like good work. Okay, so like just personally, this is my God, you're recording a uh, recording, right? Uh, yes, I maybe am. I share this yeah. after maybe I share this after you stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. We can this do another round of it? sorry, who is this? That I just got oh, uh, Nick Nick, yeah. Sure. I just we can do another to... round of Q and A after uh, Wing is done, then we sure, can yeah, probably yeah, yeah, dive yeah. into more sensitive yeah. things. Yeah, um, I'm just sure. I'm just mindful. <laughs> I'm yeah. also mindful cool. of the time, so I think we've already we gone. No worries. Um, yeah, if there's no other questions, then thanks, uh, Sharon. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody.